again, everyone, and welcome to another episode of RV Business Capital Talk, also available as a podcast and generously sponsored by Eric Sell. I'm Rick Kessler, and with me as always is Sherman Goldenberg, and we're from RV Business. And joining the two of us this afternoon is Chris Smith. Chris is the CEO of FMCA. And I've been with him, I think you say, about almost a decade now, right? Yeah, 10 years and about a month from now. Yep. Congratulations. So Thank you, you. Thanks, thanks, thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. So let's, uh, I guess that means you were not around 60 years ago when FMCA was founded, but you know the story. Yeah, this, the story is it started with uh, a handful of families who all had converted buses, right? They bought passenger buses that, for whatever reason, were not being used anymore and converted those into what they called coaches. And these families all met in, in Hinkley, Maine in 1963 to watch the uh, lunar eclipse. <laughs> and that little meeting led to where we are today, where, you know, they added a magazine, chapters, um, and it became what it is today, which is 120,000 individual members. Uh, you know, you never... I'm sure they never imagined that little innocent meeting would turn into 60 years later, kind of what we've become. So, and, and my phone went off there in, in one of America's uh, clearly uh, uh, premier uh, consumer RV consumer clubs. Yeah, I would definitely like to think that, um, you know, I think what, what differentiates us from, from your normal club is we, we're a nonprofit. We're a member-owned nonprofit, right? You know, a lot of the clubs out there, there is an owner and they're in the business of making money. So I think that's a big point that separates us is is no one's, you know, benefiting from the profits of FMCA. So everything that we do, the way we're structured, is all with the member in mind and you're giving them the most they can for, for their dues. You're based in Cincinnati. You have a, a staff stationed there. You have rallies. How many in a, um, uh, significant rallies in a year? Yeah, so we we have uh, two international conventions. Again, what what natu- national puts on here in Cincinnati? We organize those, and we also have uh, ten geographical areas in FMCA. Um, and those ten areas typically have an area rally every year or almost every year. So in a in a normal year we have between twelve and fourteen what we call bigger gatherings or events. Well, that doesn't even include the chapters that you have then, right? Right. Yeah. Then it goes down to we all we have almost three hundred chapters, and most of them have events themselves, and and some of them are very active. There's one here in Cincinnati. Uh, I mean, they get together once a month. I mean, so they're doing at least twelve uh, chapter rallies at different locations you know, around the greater Cincinnati area. So yeah, there's a lot of opportunity to get together and it, it kind of ties into the story I told where it's, it's about members getting together and enjoying their RVs and the experiences. Go ahead, Rick. Chris, I know we're going to get into some of the benefits that uh, and programs and services that you offer, but really it's, it's that networking. It's that social atmosphere that really keeps people coming back. I would imagine anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, they can do it at the events uh, through the chapters. I mean, there's chapter, you know, since we have almost 300, any, you know, there, some of them are brand specific, some are hobby specific. So if you have an interest or you own an RV, you'll find a group that's uh, that you'll fit in with, you know, and obviously we have social media as well, where we post Facebook pages where they're not even FMCA branded. I mean, it, you don't have to be an FMCA member to, to uh, join the page, but any question you have, any experience you want to share, you have a community of RVers there to interact with. Chris, uh, um, as such, you uh, FMCA really spans the generation, so to speak, in, in this business, in this uh, sector uh, of recreation vehicle owners um, uh, in a very respected way, I, I should add. Um, how is it? How is life with uh, today with FMCA? Yeah, so, so life's good. Um, we 
obviously making it 60 years, that kind of tells you things aren't going so bad. Um, <laughs> you know, we, one of the big things, you know, Sherman, we did a few years back was, you know, the first 55 years we were motorhome only, right? So you had to have a motorhome to be a member. Well, we expanded that to just about any RV, right? Any self-contained RV can join. And, and that's made a, a big impact. We actually, about two months ago, went over 10,000 non-motorhome members. So, you know, wow. we've seen that go from 0% six years ago, all the way up to 15% of our membership. Um, so that, that's, that was a really positive change. And um, yeah, I mean, we, we continue to roll out benefits and um, you know, keep, keep attracting new members. Hey, you, you've uh, recently offered a special on membership. Uh, what's with that? Uh, it caught, pulled some headlines down uh, around the country. Yeah. So we, uh, you know, we were trying to think of how to really celebrate through the month of July, you know, the 60th anniversary. And we've had a few uh, different promos. You know, we, we've run stuff on social media where we'll ask a question each week. Um, and you don't have to be an FMCA member or you can be, and you can gift the free membership, but we, we select 15 people who reply to that topic, you know, where, where's your favorite place to travel or what's your favorite benefit? Um, we're giving away 15 free memberships per week. So that's 60 for the month. Um, but the big promotion we're doing is 60% off a new join. And that's going, and we started at the beginning of the month and it runs all the way through the end of July. Um, I checked the numbers this morning and, um, pleasantly very, very happy with the results we've seen. And I also really appreciate our benefit partners and, you know, uh, people we have great relationships with like you guys for helping us to promote what I, what I think is a big deal. I mean, we're the oldest RV club out there that I know of. Um, and, but we'll also kind of expand that, not just what we're doing this month, but you know, we are in Gillette, Wyoming next month, and we'll have some other 60th festivities there as well. That yeah, return to uh, Redmond, and I'm holding the release in my hand here. <laughs> um, uh, you look for a, a big event there? I, I would hope so, yeah. I mean, we haven't been to that area of the country, I think, since 2015 we were in Pomona. So, I mean, that's the closest we've been to – the Northwest. We were in, in Redmond in 14 um, and, and we saw a nice crowd there. It, it's, it's an interesting place to go. I don't know if you've been there, but the high desert in Oregon, just, it's, it's something to see. Um, and the facility is great. I mean, it's, it's definitely in, in my top three that I've been to as far as just the views you get, the facilities, and it, it's a wonderful place to hold an event. We're excited. Chris, what are some of the things that takes place at, uh, especially your, your larger rallies, your big, your international conventions. Um, I'm sure there's seminars and social stuff, but what else happens? Um, so we, we, we put a lot of emphasis over the past few years on education, All right? We, we've kind of seen a, a void there at times where, you know, you have, especially we saw it really when there was a huge influx of owners, you know, over the past three or four years who say all oh, buying an RV sounds great, you know, and they go and buy it and they get a little bit of a tutorial from the dealer. Um, and then they kind of have to go off on their own. And, and we try to put a real emphasis on, on giving them more than just that. And so at the events, we, for a while now, we've been doing it for the last seven or eight years. We do a course called RV basics. So that's a, a two and a half day um, intense in class training on everything, all the basics of an RV, right? And we want, the goal is obviously you feel comfortable in that RV, but we also want you to be able to, you know, some of the smaller issues, you understand how the RV operates and you might be able to problem solve or fix some of those smaller things. Um, so we, we've been doing that for a while. And that's, I, I would say, honestly, out of everything that we provide, when we do these surveys and get net promoter scores back, that's the highest rated thing that we offer. I mean, it, people love taking that course. Um, and the other thing we also have started doing pre-rally as well is doing backing courses for 
um, for the towables mm -hmm. and then driving courses for anybody. Um, again, just trying to give people hands-on experience uh, because we really saw that there was a void lacking there. And then what's nice too, is when people take those courses, you know, they, they don't have, if they stay for the event, they don't have to worry about scrambling to catch 150 seminars, right? They've caught a lot of <laughs> what's in those seminars. They can actually enjoy, uh, en enjoy the event, not have to, you know, run around for four days trying to catch all those. So, um, you know, like he's touched on the seminars, the big reason people come, the exhibits is obviously a top reason. You know, we, we pack an exhibit hall, both indoor and outdoor coach displays and, those things are busy all four days. I mean, people are going through those areas, uh, the whole show. So, and obviously, you know, again, going back to a big selling point being, you know, seeing your old friends and making new ones and, and parking amongst other RVers and enjoying four days of kicking back and letting us take care of you. Uh, I've got one more on my end, uh, Rick. Uh, Go for it. Uh, uh, you know, back on a generational uh, topic, uh, what what trends, uh, Chris, have you guys noticed uh, among your membership, um, demographically or otherwise? Uh, you know, in recent years, are they getting younger? Are they getting older? Do, you know, what what else you see out there? Well, I touched on one, which is obviously a whole new demographic for us. So that that's. Uh the towable crowd we're attracting that that's kind of right. Um, taking, you know, taking some time to, to kind of adjust and welcome them and, and, and serve them the way they need to be served. Um, as far as demographics, you know, when we pass that, we, we probably falsely assume that made the assumption that younger people are the only ones driving, you know, these towables. And that's, that's not the case. And um, you know, we thought that that might, lower our age and it, it stayed pretty steady over the past few years and um you know you see you see a lot of the studies coming out and and you're seeing it trend towards younger and hopefully we we do follow suit with that but right now you know we're, we're kind of our, our demographic hasn't changed much over the past few years it's been pretty steady very good okay. go ahead rick i'm sorry no, no, actually, that was the same question I was going to ask was was just the influx of new RVers and, and uh, especially with the towables coming in, like you mentioned. Um, let's uh, finish up with this. And that's, you know, what's next for FMCA? What's coming up uh, the 61st anniversary and, and beyond? I, you know, it's business as usual for now. You know, I mean, we have the whole gamut of uh, benefits that we're going to be launching or uh, seeking approval on from from our committees and executive board because uh, again we want we want to make FMCA membership a no-brainer right sixty dollars to join and fifty to renew and and we just want to pack that full of member benefits to where you know you take advantage of one of the fifty benefits we have and you've paid for it and some uh, so we're always seeking that out and and we also have a, a vote to um, here in Gillette next month that I think will definitely have a very positive impact on our membership if it's approved. And uh, I think we'll further, you know, change our demographics. So more on that, maybe we can talk after, um, <laughs> after Gillette, if, if it passes, we can kind of discuss that exciting news. Cause it's, it's the most exciting thing that I've uh, seen as, you know, that could come to fruition in a while. So um, more to come on that. Um, yeah, we're just all right. Going, we're we're working towards sixty five and seventy and and a hundred. We just well, keep going. So we'll 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 end the program on uh, the cliffhanger that Chris just d put us on. <laughs> Chris, thank you so much for your time. All right, thanks guys. Thanks, Rick. Yeah, Sherman, it. Sherman. I I can't leave without saying that's right. You know. I got, I got to share a quick story. I'm sorry. I, I see at the time we're going down. We have, we have a few minutes. That's I can right. squeeze this in. So at the last Elkhart open house, I was, we were sharing a booth with a benefit partner and I was talking to Ed Thor, which I'm sure you both know. And in walks in Sherman into the indoor exhibit hall. And he's got, you know, it looks like a, a news reporter hat on and he's got his sunglasses on and he's got his toothpick in. And I said, 
look at that. I mean, the coolest guy in the room. I said, I can't wait to talk to my good friend Sherman. Ned and I were sitting there and we watched you walk right by both of us. Oh. Right by. Didn't even talk to either one of us, didn't look our way. That's okay. When you have a name like Sherman, you're an RV legend. It's okay. You can you can get away with that stuff. It's all right. I still love you. <laughs> Thank he you. Leaned you. <laughs> yeah, it speaks to my uh, observation and skills. Um, <laughs> thank you and, and for joining us, Chris. We appreciate the heck out of it. Yep. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.